Well, welcome. Good evening. Welcome to Changing Lives. Let's give you a warm welcome. Thank you for coming and supporting the channel. And um, tonight it's about fellowship. It's about short words. It's about speaking. It's about you talking to me as well. Um, wonderful things are actually happening. Uh, we've got different kind of program coming up, coming on. So, good evening to people that are coming on now, Alison. Nice to see you, and Tony and the children. I can only see you on the photograph, but <coughs> welcome. So, but a few learning about all the technical stuff about what's going on in the program and with the program. There's a few things happening. So I want to thank you. Um, I hope and pray that the centre is going well. I had a quick chat with people today. But, um, so before we start, we'll, we'll be going pray and see what God wants to say. Just talk about it in general. Pray for society. Pray for issues that are going on with governments, police, and different things like that. So I want to thank God for, for everything like that. Thank God for your families. We need to keep remembering to pray for your families. It really is important. Um, this is part of it. Hi, James. Uh, nice to see you. Lovely to see you. Lisa, nice to have you. I've, it says I've been with Lisa all day <coughs> talking about this. So for those, um, what happens is we, while there's only the staff on and the lads, I, I can I can talk about this. We've worked out, I've worked out now how we can actually have you, one or two of you, on here as well. Um, so I know there's nobody in there tonight with any Skype. Um, on the phones, uh, but at least maybe tomorrow night we'll have one, uh, somebody coming on and giving maybe a testimony. You'll be going on live from the centre, um, so but it'll be really good. I'm really looking forward to everything that's going on. You can't see anything that's around my screen. Uh, good evening. So we've got I've got lots of little things around the screen um, that I can play around with. <coughs> and as I get proficient at it, a lot more stuff will be happening, things coming up on screen and that you can actually interact with. So I'm really excited about what's actually going on here. So thanks again to Lisa for bearing with me. Fish tank looks absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. If it's eating its tail, then you need to preferably give a bit more food because of a bit of bullying going on or whatever's going on. So please um, be aware of that. Right, let's just have a couple of minutes talking. Please pray for the hospitals. Pray for the fire. Pray for Reese's on. Well done. And JD, JD. Can I just stop and just speak to JD? Listen, you have to forgive me. Please forgive me. I've tried to get hold of you. Somebody infected our other account with um, a virus and we lost 1,800 people. You just went and I couldn't do nothing with it. Couldn't get passwords, couldn't get back into it. Facebook wouldn't let me back into it. And so we had to open up another one. So we have been praying for you and we've been um, praying for Scotland as well. So we thank God for you. So I, I seen you today. I was going through a list and I've seen you. So I thought, well, praise God, I'll bring him back. I can text him now, uh, message him so he knows that we're on. So thanks again and thanks for Scotland. Um, Alison's at the top there. She was first down. She doesn't seem so lonely now that the people from Scotland are apart. So I thank God for you. Please pray for our, our governments, whether it's in Scotland, the Tyrant, or 
it's in England or it's, it's Wales, it doesn't matter where it is. Please pray for them. It really is important that we seek God for God to give them wisdom for, for us. It may be difficult. Somebody said to me, um, you must be getting bored, isolating and sitting around, even in gym. <coughs> so I said, not really. I haven't got enough hours in the day to do what I'm actually doing. I mean, I think I'm more busy here than I am at the centre. Um, I think Lisa gets a bit fed up with phone calls sometimes. And um, Ali. Um, but, you know, I thank God for them. So I'm more busy here. Because, you know, I've made this choice. I follow Jesus. So I want to read my word. I want to dig into the studies. I think I've got two iPads here. I've got the computer there. And I've got a laptop here as well. Seriously. And I really do love to dig in. Uh, I've been getting up in the middle of the night. Margaret hasn't been too pleased. Um, just to pray, just to come and study the word. I'll go and sit in the garden. I'm not allowed out. Margaret's not allowed out anyway. Our daughters bring us food. So it's really good. So, But you know, I've made that choice. I choose to do this because I want to help those out there not having to deal with me going into hospital. So you and I that are isolating, you and I that haven't got this coronavirus are helping society, are helping our doctors and nurses. We, you may not think that, I don't even believe it, but we are by applying self-discipline. And I personally believe now part of this and God's are out of this, and I would say even just for me, to bring me to a place of self-discipline so I read the word, I pray, I'm having fellowship with my wife. We can't go anywhere. So we have to make the best of what we've got. I do understand around the country that there is much, there's been abuse, um, whether it be male on female, or female on male. That's because what happens is, when there's no lockdown, I'm going to work, Margaret's going to work. We're not spending every day, 24 hours a day together. Now we're having to learn to do that and it's a relationship. And I, I equate this to being in a relationship with Jesus. If I'm in a relationship with Jesus 24 hours a day and I'm in a relationship with my wife 24 hours a day, I need to treat my wife the way I treat God. Does that make sense? <coughs> Excuse me, it does to me because I want to see the glory of God come in my life. And for the last week and a half with this new program, just learning about it has been a tremendous work. So, one of the things <coughs> I would like to say to you these discussions are only be going on about 45 minutes now because we're still working on the battery. There's no delivery, so I haven't got extra batteries or different things like that. I can't. If this goes off quickly, we can put it back on quickly because I've got another program which just jumps straight in. It's, it's there. So we've got what's called the Skype now. And many people know about it, but the program that we've actually bought or purchased for the centre. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the centre, the church. Um, we'll be bringing guest speakers in and they can um, do this remotely. Um, I've just had five minutes with Lisa before and it took, a, it took us a while, but I got it with the help of Lisa. So on the way it works for now, I'm not sure whether we can phone you, but the way we I've found out it works is that you phone me and I can take that call. You'll come up on half the screen and everybody else will see it and I'll ask you questions and you can answer me and we can do it that way. Um, 
just certain people um, get in touch with me phones and stuff praise the Lord so that's the situation so please pray pray for that that this gets better I'm waiting for a green screen to come in I've got a few backdrops that I want to put on all Christian um, and I'll be changing them periodically I like scripture so I want scripture on the back wall so when somebody's looking at at the, the, the channel they're going to be seeing scripture at the back as well so I praise God for what's going on I can't put too much on now because it's all blurry without that screen <coughs> so I'm just letting you know the way it's going on so I thank God for it so Jimmy I'm sorry today that um, that was me messing about I'm sorry to play you about um, I can't cut any of this out because it goes straight onto Facebook, it's live, and so. But these are just notices that I've done. I had a phone call today from the office that people wish to tithe. Unfortunately, what's been happening with PayPal? But they've been charging us. So any tithes and offers that are going in, they've been taking a percentage away. So I'm trying now to get another um, support um, line up. So at the moment, if you go onto our website, the bank details are in there and you can transfer money in there. But just let us know that you are transferring money in um, and we'll make sure that it, it's in. That's basically what it is. Um, if it's done through charities, we're notified that people have put money in. So there, there has been a concern. People wanted to give gifts and people wanted to tithes and give love offerings to the church and the centre. So please bear with us. For now, if, if you want to give anything, just go to the website and our bank details are at www.reachoutministries.co.uk. I'll have that put up on, on here. Um, the other thing is, please, we've got a helpline here. Forget the text, um, I, I never got rid of that. Um, let me just do that and I'll show you um, how easy it is to get rid of the text. No, it's not, I'll leave it, forget it. My mind's done in. Right, so please phone that helpline and there's somebody at the end of that phone who's a lovely person, knows exactly what you're going through, what you've been through and they're ready there just to even just to listen to you, just to talk to you. And they've been through a lot of things and they're absolutely a wonderful family. So tomorrow night we, we'll have one of the a guest speaker. Um it'll be one of the lads from the centre. He'll give a little bit of a testimony. I'll interview while we're on now. So one of the lads who feels that they can do it for about four or five minutes that'll be fine and so people can see you and um, maybe they can ask you questions and i'll read them and ask you know um you so we'll do that so without any further ado let's go to uh, oh thanks jd wonderful <clears throat> I will keep that one and I'll write it down before because they all stay on. I want to go to scripture and I want to go to Matthew chapter 26 verse 36. Um, as I say, we're not going to go on forever. Uh, we'll finish about quarter to eight uh, because of the, the, the life of the battery. Um, and we can't, I can't purchase anything else. Uh, I think the postman have gone as well. But let me, let me do the scripture. This is what I love. Let me say something. If this is your first time on here, and there's a couple of people that is first time on, um, let me say something. I don't want you to be disappointed. We love Jesus. We exalt Jesus Christ as our Lord and saviour he is first and he's got priority in our lives 
we are a church, part of the body of Christ, uh, changing lives, which is in Hartlepool. I'm actually isolating in Liverpool. We have a drug and rehabilitation centre supported housing in Hartlepool as well. So we deal with up to 21 lads. At the moment, we haven't been able to take anybody just for the simple reason is until they're tested to say that they have, they're clean from coronavirus, we're not allowed to take any more residents and we have to use wisdom to keep the lads safe. One of the other important issues that I will say is that every evening that we're on, we take communion because the Bible says for us, now this is for us, that this is part of our church, a lot of our church come on. And we do this as often as we come together. So I will let you know um, that this is part of it. Okay. <clears throat> I don't understand what that means, but we'll, we'll, I'll pick that up later. Okay, verse 36. Then Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two, um, the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful, sorrowfully and deeply distressed. He said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further, fell on his face and prayed, O oh my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me, even for one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, the second time he went away, prayed, O oh my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will will be done in my life. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour has come. And is at hand that the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <coughs> I'll do tomorrow evening the other part of this. Uh, and I'll go from verse 47 tomorrow. But I just want to concentrate at this particular time tonight. Three times. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus went to pray on his own. And three times, his disciples were asleep. Three times. Now, I equate that to, to sometimes you and I. When God is asking us to do something and we're not truly with him. Oh, we've gone along with him, but we're not a part of what he's actually doing. We're just happy to go along because we're going to be company for him. That's how I equate the scriptures here. They've gone along. It's late at night. They've gotten sat by the tree and they've fallen asleep. Jesus has gone away and he's prayed, and he's prayed, Father, if it is at all possible, take this cup from me. First, and then he went over again, and there was sleep. Can't you wait one hour and just pray with me? And I think a lot of Christians, a lot of us are like that sometimes. We get so tired, we get so bogged down with society. We really, truly do. We, we forget the purpose that we've actually come for. 
We've come, we've come to be in the presence of God, to follow in his footsteps, to follow the Holy Spirit, to do what they want us to do. You see, some of us, some, some people are just happy being Christians, going to church, being a part of that, going home, and that's it. Some of the people want to go a little bit further. Some of the people want to go to church, and then they want to come to a Bible study and a prayer meeting during the week. Then they go home, and they are happy with that. Then there is others that want to go the whole way. If you ask for a volunteer, they're the first to volunteer to make the tea, to clean the church, to go on the streets, to do the cooking, to, to do absolutely everything. They're the first one. They're, they're people that have recognised that God is in this and they don't just want to be a follower, they want to be a doer of Christ. Peter denied Jesus three times. Listen, let me say this. I can't say this any stronger than I'm saying it. I'm talking to the lads in the centre and, and, and things like that. Um, you may want to be with Jesus so much that we say that we will follow him wherever he goes. No, we, most of us won't. I, I, need you, I need people to start thinking like this. I really believe God does. Don't try and be like somebody else. If somebody else is praying for three hours a day and you're praying for ten minutes, don't try and be like them. If somebody's going to church and doing every Bible study, because we do a lot of Bible study, we do seven every night, or seven a week of a night for an hour, and we do seven, six or seven, seven, six in the mornings, um, I mean, six during a week. Plus we go to church twice on a Sunday. So we, we do a lot. Um, people are comfortable in Christ where they are. So I always say this, I am where I am in Christ because that's where I'm comfortable. Let me say that again. I am where I am in the position I am in Christ now because that's where I am comfortable. <coughs> because there is times that... Do I really want to do that? Go out onto the streets? Do I really wish to preach tonight? Do I want to go and feed the homeless? Do I want to have fellowship in a Bible study? Do I want to go to a prayer meeting? People say prayer meetings are boring. I don't know any prayer meeting that I go to that's boring. Because when I'm, in, when I'm following Christ, I'm in Christ. I am having communion with him. I'm having fellowship with him. How can that be boring? You and I need to step out more. You and I are where we are because that's where we're comfortable. And it's when Christ asks us to do something else that we go outside our comfort zone. But this is how Jesus trains you and I up. And this is what he was saying um, to Peter. Uh, let me just find it. You are still sleeping and resting. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is giving betrayed into the hands. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. But it also says, Cruz uh, Cruz, uh, she will go and pray of the and exceed the sorrow for Father. Please let the cup pass on me. And when the hours come, what? Listen, 41. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. My flesh, your flesh, is weak. My flesh sometimes doesn't want to get out of bed of a night, of a morning. My flesh wants to hug that pillar and keep hold of that pillar. My flesh doesn't want to run round for people. My flesh sometimes doesn't want to go to church. My flesh sometimes doesn't want to preach. 
My flesh is against God. My spirit rejoices in the things of God. So I force, I push my flesh down. So as my spirit takes over and leads my flesh. You see, it should be our spirit that's leading the flesh. Not the flesh leading the spirit. You and I have got the authority. Luke 10, 19 says, I've given you all authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. He's given us that authority to take hold of our flesh and put that to death. Paul says the battle is in the mind. That's why in Ephesians 6, he talks about spiritual battle. For you and I, the spiritual realm is more reality than what we're living in now. This is temporary. The spiritual realm is for eternity. That's where God is training you and I up to be able to function in. Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You may not feel that right now. You may be like the disciples or myself sometimes, falling asleep. We've heard the gospel. This is what people say. They did the gospel. They'd been with Jesus for three years. They'd seen him raise the dead. They'd seen him feed thousands of people. They'd seen him open blind eyes. And they'd seen him do much more than's written in the book. And yet when they go out with him, they fell asleep. Why? Because they got so used to it. They'd seen it all. But what they hadn't seen was the spiritual realm of what Jesus was actually appointed to do. And that didn't come to realisation until Jesus had died and rose again. You and I have got no excuse. We've got it written in the Lamb's Book. Of, it's written there. So you and I are going to be accountable before God for every action, for every word that proceeds from our mouth and every action that we do. <clears throat> 1 Peter 4, 17, judgment starts in the house of God. And if it starts with you and I, what's the judgment going to be like for those that are unsaved? You still want to be a Christian? You still want to follow Jesus? To follow Jesus, you and I have to put our flesh to death. It's as simple as that. You and I have to put our flesh to death. Sometimes we have to get up early in the morning and we have to pray. Sometimes we have to go to bed early to get up. Sometimes we have to go to bed late to pray late. And that's why Jesus says, listen, when the night's here, the enemy's about. And he's about like a roaring lion. And the devil, listen, let me say this. The devil can turn up as an angel of light. And you and I, if we haven't got wisdom and discernment from God, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. And that's why, I, leave your past in the, in the background. You may have had a terrible life. You may be abused physically, sexually, whatever. I apologise. I know exactly how it feels. But you know, there comes a day when I can let, keep that. I had a choice. Does that rule my life or do I rule this life? And I learned quickly how to manipulate that situation that I'd been through. Let me explain this. I know many, 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 many people that have had really rough backgrounds. I'm talking about really rough, horrendous things. But when they talk to people in authority, they can manipulate them people to believe in that they're the ones that's still hanging on to that. And they're not really hanging on to it. They haven't, they haven't kept hold of it. And I say to these people, these lads, listen lads, let your past be gone. Let your future be a new future. 
So my future does dictate my past. My past will never dictate my future. Christ dictates my future by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a day the whole world, all the nations, look for Jesus going forward. And I thank God, and it brings to, for me, memory of what Jesus done for me. What Jesus does, he was always looking to the future to fulfill the past. And it's the future that fulfills the future. And it's fulfilled the past, the past. Listen, you and I have been set free by the grace and mercy of Christ. Let me say this. I'll say this again, and I need you to go away later on. I want you to pray about what I've just said. We are new creations in Christ. Keep on going forward. I have been set free by the blood of Jesus. Now, the words that we're actually speaking there is, I have been set free. You and I have a choice. Do we hold on to that freedom? Or do we let it go and hold on to the past? And that's what a lot of people do. They don't grasp the freedom part. Once we start to grasp that Christ has set us free, we are free. I don't need to think about all the atrocities that's gone on in my life. I choose to forgive. And I don't just choose to forgive. I choose to forget. I refuse to be bound up by my past. And you have to do the same. All of us have to do the same. Yes, we're all at different levels. Every one of us are at different levels in Jesus. All at different points in Christianity. But don't let that hold us back. Some of us are mature more than others. That's okay. Learn from the mature Christians. But learn from the Christians that have got wisdom, grace and mercy of Christ. And learn from the ones that have got the fear of God. And I explained that last week. The fear of God is reverence to who he is. He's the king of the universe. Every knee will bow to him. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how much money you've got, every knee will bow. You won't buy yourself out of any punishment. Your fame will get you nowhere. Who you was on this planet will get you nowhere. How many people you know will get you nowhere. It's who you and I know that's going to get you and I somewhere. And you and I know Christ. We have accepted his free gift. You and I are going to go straight into the presence of God. Straight into the presence of God. But we need to let go of the bad stuff in our past and come through and pick up the good stuff that God's got for us. You know, we'll talk about Daniel and his prayer tomorrow night, and we'll talk about, we'll go from verse 47 um, tomorrow. Um, again, I'll say, it's check, I'm just trying to think of the past three. I can change over to other things, but I'd rather just stay on this and give us as, as much notice as, as possible. So I'll finish the end until tomorrow evening. 
<coughs> on the scriptures. And this is for those that don't know. We started um, in our fellowship, and there's been there's a few people on that have been quite a few times to our fellowship. Even the lads from Scotland have been. We thank God for everything. Um, but we do take communion every evening. Um, we're in fellowship now. We can see each other, or I can see a photograph of you. Um, as I say, we've got this Skype call in now. If you wish to come on and be interviewed, whereas you come on this, on what we've got a Skype, you phone up, it all comes up here. You go on a screen and I can actually interview you. So we're going to get some good interviews coming. We'll maybe do one tomorrow night. And But you have to use Skype and you have to phone in. Don't use the paying one. Come from your computer if you can possibly do that. Um, and make sure and keep it free. Yeah, it really is important that we do that. Remember this helpline 079602 73261. Please, if you know anybody that needs help, if you know anybody that's got families that's on drugs or alcohol and you just want to speak to somebody, pass that number on. If you've got a bit of depression or anything like that, please pass this number on. We've got people that are waiting to be able to speak to you. Um, again, I've had phone calls from the office to say that people want to tithe and often um, I've had other, other messages people want to give. We're not doing it at the moment through PayPal. They take a certain amount of percentage out of it. So if, if, if you're giving your tithes through PayPal, they'll take some of it. Um, I'm not going to go in what I believe, but they take some of it. So <clears throat> I'm trying to find out another program that people can pay to. But if you go onto our website, www.reachoutministries.co.uk, um, you can go onto our, our bank details are on there and you can use them bank details to transfer money. It's really quite simple. So please don't, um, don't worry about it. And if you can't give anything, that's praise God. Hallelujah. That, that's okay. We're not after anybody's money. But uh, anyway, we come to the, one of the most important parts, and it's communion. So please, I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes just to go, even if it's a drink of water and a little bit of biscuit or a butty, whatever you got on, just so as you can take communion and, and be a part of us. Um, please do that. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for our salvation. I thank you, Lord God, that you really died for each one of us. Your body was broken and you took our sufferings. Your blood was shed for each one of us, Lord God, to bring us into your presence. Father, you said do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we do this now in remembrance of you. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that your glory abounds, abounds in all of our lives. Forgive us our sins, Lord God. Forgive those who sin against us. Help us to forgive, Lord God. Father, give us a heart of flesh and take away the heart of stone, Lord God. While we were speaking about that last night, we threw you away again. Father, we glorify your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's, I'm going to play a song. Uh, I don't know whether you can hear this. If you can, can somebody just say, well, we can hear it. I'm just going to play this while we're taking communion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
place for your name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right, I'm um, going to pray. <coughs> I'd like to play you this. Did you hear that song? Yes? Okay. Um, I, I'm getting really excited about all of this. You, 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 you don't really, I've just put them numbers up. Because this is getting, the more I get into it, the more, the easier it gets. Um, come on, I want the lads. Can you all stand up? Thank you, lads. Jimmy, come on. <coughs> get the tambourines out I'm going to play a song once this is finished um, I'll pray and we can go this is um, one of our worship leaders in church Isaac let's keep praying there is power Thank you for every person that's been on here tonight, Lord God, to listen to your word. Father, I ask that it just doesn't go out, but it goes out and it accomplishes everything it needs to accomplish, Lord God. Father, that you lift us up, you give us strength, you fill us full of wisdom, discernment, grace, mercy, Lord God. Father, you heal our families, you protect our families from this coronavirus, Lord God, each one of them. Father, if anybody's got sick people here on this on tonight, Lord God, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you protect them, you heal them, Lord Jesus. Father, you say whatever we ask for in prayer, you will do it for us, Lord God. Father, our faith tonight, Lord God, is that you're going to keep each one of us safe. Father, that we may preach your word and glorify your name to this nation and the nations around the will, Lord God. So, Father, I thank you. I just want to tell you how much we love you, Jesus. We truly do love you. May you be exalted in all the earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, God bless you. Thanks again for coming. It really is a privilege just to be able to talk to you. Um, I'll get used to typing, looking at this, looking at that, looking at that and i'll get a lot of stuff up faster but there's stuff up there now that you can see
God bless you. Speak to you and see you tomorrow. Bless you. Praise God.